Yes, and meanwhile, Intel announcing it will invest at least $20 billion to build a pair of new chip plants outside Columbus, Ohio, saying it could grow that location into the largest silicon manufacturing location on the planet. I spoke with CEO Pat Gelsinger earlier this morning, asked him to what degree he expects these new plants will feed chip demand for industries, specifically autos, that have historically used older process technology. Take a listen. If you think about the car, you know, today, a premium car, about 4% semiconductors. By 2030, it'll be about 20% semiconductors, so a 5x increase. And most of that expansion is in areas like autonomous driving, uh, advanced uh, infotainment, uh, 5 and 6G communications capabilities, electric vehicle capabilities. So much of that 5X growth is actually the car becoming more modern. And as I've described it, you know, the car is becoming a computer with tires. I also asked him how this announcement fits into Intel's broader strategy and other variables like this pending $52 billion in funding for the CHIPS Act, which Congress has not yet approved. We need this capacity, period. And even if it's just for the Intel products, you know, we would be announcing this site today. You know, we, we believe that there's uh, simply so much demand for our products. But when we uh, look at our foundry business, hmm, you know, we're going to run wafers for our products as well as our foundry customers at this location. So we need it for that reason as well. We also, as we said, with the CHIPS Act, we said, you know, we're going to build this site, period but it's gonna be bigger and faster with the support of the CHIPS Act. We're again putting our chips on the table. The say do ratio is high. We need their support to go bigger and faster to restore this industry on American soil. 3,000 Intel jobs initially, 7,000 construction jobs, Julia. That's why he's in DC. President Biden, of course, wants to uh, talk about this and wrap himself in some of this glory.